All right, this is gonna be a quick video and the only real editing I did in this video is just removing me, moving the camera around. That's it. Okay, does your snowblower not start? Can you not get that thing to start at all? How about your lawnmower? Or really anything with a small engine? Have you ever seen a snowblower or lawnmower on Craigslist or the Facebook marketplace that's super cheap or free, but it says doesn't run? Well, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a clogged carburetor. The reason is, I'm guilty of it occasionally, is most of us at the end of the season just want to be done with the lawnmower or done with the snowblower and you leave the gas in there all winter or all summer long. Well, guess what? That gas is going to break down, gum up, and clog everything inside that carburetor. So, I'm going to show you a quick and easy cheap fix to get that piece of equipment back up and running. Alright, so the only items you're going to need is one, brake cleaner. You can use carb cleaner, but it doesn't work as good. Or if you can't find brake cleaner for some odd reason, you can get it at Walmart. It's super cheap. Carb cleaner will work, but brake cleaner is going to work the best. The second thing you're going to need is a socket and wrench. I can't tell you your specific size because every carburetor is going to be a little different. If your carburetor is a little more exposed, you could use an adjustable wrench if that's all you got. And that's it. Let's, let's get to it. All right, first thing first, locate the carburetor and the fuel bowl is at the bottom. Make note of any indentation or offsets or really any identifiable markings and remember it for later or maybe take a quick picture. Now, the only thing we're gonna do here is remove the center bolt to remove the fuel bowl. Now, if you're working on a, like a riding lawnmower, sometimes they're gonna have a fuel pump down here and there could be a couple of wires attached to it. It's just a solenoid. It just opens and closes. I don't know why they call it a fuel pump. They just do. Anyway, remove the wires and then remove the fuel pump. Once the fuel bowl is removed, take a look inside and remove anything that pretty much doesn't look like it's supposed to be there. I'm going to spray mine out with brake cleaner in just a minute. All right, this little area right here is where the fuel hangs out. The white plastic thing here is the float. Center hole is a jet. Hidden behind this area here is a needle valve which opens and closes depending on how much fuel is actually in the bowl and is controlled by the float. Okay, what we're going to do quick is spray down this center hole area or the jet and then spray in the location where the needle valve is. If the needle valve is stuck or clogged, fuel can't get into the bowl to, you know, supply gas. If the jet is clogged, then fuel can't get into the airstream, atomize, and well, you know, complete the rest of the process. So really get in there and spray the jet good because there's some really tiny holes in there that like to clog up super easy. After the first hose down, I set the snowblower back down and I move the fuel bowl up and down to make sure there's good fuel flow or if there's any fuel flow at all um, and then kind of let the gas flow through there a little bit. We just want to remove anything that was clogged up in there and I pretty much repeated this whole process twice and that's it. Next thing you want to do is reinstall the fuel bowl exactly or as close as it was before. Again, take note of all your indentations and whatnot and reinstall the bowl pretty much how you took it back off. Mine had a lower indentation right here and that's where the bulk part of the float is going to sit. So that's basically how I'm lining mine up. Mine also had a little indentation and the float also had that same indentation. So that's pretty much where I'm going to put mine. Now throw in some fresh gas in the tank and start it up. It might take a a few extra pulls because you're getting fresh gas through the entire system. Once you get it started, let it warm up and run for a bit. I'm pretty much going to let mine run out of gas. That's it, you're pretty much done. Now some of you that do have some engine knowledge are gonna know that this isn't the 100% way to clean a carburetor and all that kind of stuff, and I agree, it's not. But this will get you up and running. Okay, now I'm gonna throw in a few quick tips here real quick. I'm gonna suggest, if you can, use gas without ethanol. Again, if you can help it. Here in Nebraska, we do have an option of using gas with the 10% ethanol, or we can also get the gas without ethanol. I always get the gas without ethanol because it seems like ethanol gas always creates problems. Another thing you could do is add sea foam into the gas tank or your gas can and that will help keep the carburetor clean all season long. And then once the season is over, start your lawnmower or your snowblower or whatever it is and let it run completely out of gas. That way you know it's not going to get clogged up again. Alright, well I hope this video was helpful. If it was don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need help staying warm this winter, make sure you check out the merch down below. I've got some nice 
boom average joe sweatshirts for sale follow me on instagram and i will see you on the next one the rest of the video is just me making sure my main snowblower is good to go this one i do use regular unleaded gas Yes, I did get busy and I did forget to drain the gas or let it run out of gas last winter. It happens, we all do it. Luckily, this one started on the first pool like it does every year since 2012 when I got it. ish close enough oh and don't use regular bolts in place of shear bolts like I did here because you will ruin the transmission Yeah. 